A well-known Russia military blogger has been killed in a bomb blast in Russia's St. Petersburg. Russia's State Investigative Committee has opened a murder investigation. 25 people were injured in the blast. A Russian official has said Ukraine is behind the attack. However, a Ukrainian presidential advisor has said that domestic terrorism is breaking out in Russia. Russia's Wagner paramilitary group has said that it has taken legal control of Ukraine's Bakhmut after, after it captured the city hall. The battle for Bakhmut has been raging for months. In a latest video, Wagner's head was seen holding a Russian flag. He said the flag would be planted on Bakhmut City Hall. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has said that the military situation in Bakhmut is especially hot. Ukraine's army has said that it still holds the city. Experts say that Bakhmut carries little strategic value. However, the battle for Bakhmut is the longest battle in the Ukraine war. Six people have been killed as Russian missiles hit residential areas near Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. The attack came after Russia took over the rotating presidency of the United Nations Security Council. The move angered Ukraine and its allies that have sanctioned Russia. Meanwhile, President Zelensky has hailed the resistance against what he called the biggest force against humanity of our time. German economy and energy minister Robert Habeck made a surprise visit, visit to Kyiv. The aim was to discuss Ukraine's post-war reconstruction. Habeck traveled by train and was accompanied by a small business delegation. He reportedly said that he was there to signal to Ukraine that it will be victorious and that it will be rebuilt. He also said that Ukraine will be an economically strong partner in the future. French President Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen will visit China this week. The two leaders will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping. The war in Ukraine is likely to be among the major talking points. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen is in the Central American nation of Belize. She is set to spend three days in the country. Tsai is scheduled to meet Belize's Prime Minister. Belize is one of the two remaining allies that Taiwan has in Central America. Ahead of this, Tsai spent three days in Guatemala. This trip comes after Honduras established diplomatic ties with China. Police in New York City have set up metal barriers around Trump Tower and blocked roads near the Manhattan Criminal Courthouse. This comes as they brace for potential protests after former U.S. President Donald Trump was indicted over hush money payments to a porn star ahead of the 2016 presidential election. Trump is due to be arraigned at the Manhattan Courthouse. Finland's National Coalition Party leader has claimed victory in a tightly fought parliamentary election. The country's Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, of the Social Democratic Party conceded defeat. The NCP has led in polls for almost two years now. The party promised to curb spending and stop the rise of public debt. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi has said that the hijab is the law in Iran. His remarks came after a viral video showed a man throwing yogurt at two unveiled women. The incident is believed to have happened in the city of Shandiz. Judicial authorities in Shandiz issued arrest warrants for the man. Protests against Israel's potential judicial overhaul show no signs of abating. More than 150,000 people attended anti-government protests over the weekend. This comes after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu suspended the plan for overhaul. Critics say that the reforms are a threat to the country's independence, the court's independence. Sorry. Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido has accused the country's president, Nicolas Maduro, of planning to issue an arrest warrant against him. 
Guaido said that Maduro plans to arrest other opposition leaders as well. Guaido said, and I quote, If you arrest me, the world will see you as what you are, a dictator. He has been barred by the government from holding public posts. However, Guaido has expressed his desire to run in the primary election in October. Pope Francis led a Palm Sunday service. This came a day after he was discharged from a hospital. The Pope addressed a crowd of more than 30,000 people. He had been admitted following a severe bout of bronchitis. The Pope had complained of breathing difficulties before being admitted to the hospital. People in Paris voted against renewing the licenses of free-floating electric scooter operators in the city. This makes Paris the first European capital to completely ban the service. 89% of the city's registered voters cast ballots against electric scooters. Officials considered banning the rental electric scooters due to concerns over public safety. China has launched a new carrier rocket. The rocket is known as the TL2Y1. It blasted off from a launch center in northwest China. The satellite will be used in remote sensing imaging experiments and other technical verifications. A hailstorm has hit the U.S. state of Texas. The hailstones were reportedly as big as golf balls. The National Storm Prediction Center has warned of severe weather in parts of Texas. Large hail, significant wind gusts and a strong tornado are expected. People in the U.S. state of Arkansas are engaged in cleanup operations after a strong tornado hit on Friday. At least 50 people were injured and more than 2,600 structures were impacted by the storm. U.S. President Joe Biden has issued an emergency declaration for the state. The White House is providing assistance that includes grants for temporary housing and home repairs. Heavy rain has caused flash floods in Australia's largest city, Sydney. This prompted rescue operations. Roads were, roads were closed. Authorities have warned of bad weather, bad weather ahead. Sydney is likely to face more heavy rains and flash floods this week. A forest fire is raging in, the cent in central Seoul in South Korea. It forced the evacuations of at least 120 homes. The fire started on a mountain in the middle of Seoul. It raised forests the size of some 30 football fields before it was brought under control. Scientists have broken the world record for the deepest fish ever caught. They have also found the deepest fish ever filmed on camera. The fish was filmed in August 2022 at a depth of more than 8,000 meters. A few days later, the team collected two snailfish in the Japan Trench. This was the first fish ever to be collected from deeper than 8 kilometers. McDonald's has temporarily closed its U.S. offices. The burger chain is also preparing to inform employees about its layoff plans. This comes as a part of a broader company restructuring. It has asked employees to cancel all in-person meetings with vendors and outside parties. So far, there is no clarity on how many employees will be laid off. Switzerland's UBS will cut 30% of its workforce after taking over Credit Suisse. Media reports suggest that the bank could cut about 11,000 jobs. This will also include jobs from the US Investment Bank. UBS had agreed to buy Credit Suisse earlier this month for about $3 billion. The deal has given UBS control of Credit Suisse's assets and its workforce. New York Federal Reserve's President John Williams has said that financial conditions will be key to further rate policy. He has stressed that further future policy decisions will be driven by employment and inflation data. The official said he expects inflation to ebb to 3.25% this year. 
In its last meeting, the Fed had cautioned about the financial conditions weighing on its growth. The European Central Bank is closely monitoring market conditions. This is according to ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos. He has said that the bank will act to preserve its price and financial stability. Windows also gave reassurances about the banking sector in the euro area. He said that banks have strong capital and liquidity positions. However, Windows warned of dangers elsewhere in the system. The number of global mergers and acquisition deals have shrunk to their lowest in more than a decade. This comes in the wake of high inflation and fears of a recession. Deal-making during the first quarter of 2023 slumped 48% to about $500 billion. In the same quarter last year, it hovered at around $1.1 trillion. Europe is the hardest hit, where business shrank by 70%. A committee of U.S. lawmakers will meet Disney CEO Bob Iger and Apple CEO Tim Cook this week. They're expected to discuss the business the firms do in the Chinese market. One lawmaker said that he wanted Iger to testify over Disney's business dealings in that country. Disney and other studios have been criticized for self-censoring movies to enter the China market. HSBC senior executives are set to face their Hong Kong shareholders. CEO Noel Quinn and the chairman Mark Tucker will be speaking at the meeting. This comes as the company is seeking to resist a push to split its business in Asia. The lender is being pushed by its top shareholder and a local activist to split off its Asian operations. Saudi Arabia and OPEC Plus oil producers have announced surprise oil output cuts. They announced a cut of around 1.16 million barrels per day. Experts are expecting oil prices to shoot up on the news. The latest reductions could lift oil prices by $10 per barrel, an official has said. OPEC Plus is an organization that enables the cooperation of leading oil producing countries. U.S. lawmakers have reintroduced a bill to protect the news sector. It will help news organizations negotiate ad rates with big tech. Broadcasters and publishers with less than 1,500 workers can now jointly negotiate advertising rates. New news organizations have complained for a long time about not getting fair compensation. Google and Meta are some of the biggest tech companies placing online ads. The White House and other famous accounts have refused to pay for Twitter's verification mark. The blue tick verification mark adds credibility to communications by White House staffers over Twitter. This comes after Twitter started charging payments from blue tick, blue tick holders. Other accounts like that of New York Times and celebrities like LeBron James have followed suit. This shows low affinity for Twitter's new subscription model. Red Bull's Max Verstappen claimed his first win at the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne. The race was filled with drama straight from the green light to the checkered flag. Seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton finished second, while Fernando Alonso took the third spot. The English football team Chelsea has sacked manager Graham Potter. Chelsea is presently at the 11th spot in the Premier League. Potter was signed as Chelsea's manager in September last year. He managed the team for 31 games, winning only 11. Bruno Salter will be Chelsea's new interim head coach. Manchester United's Bruno Fernandes surprised a man who consistently messaged him for 300 days. The fan tweeted to the Portuguese player for 280 days continuously before catching his attention. Fernandes thanked the fan on Twitter and promised to reward him with his jersey. Russian tennis star Daniil Medvedev is really happy that he can return to Wimbledon this year. Medvedev won his first Miami Open title on Sunday. He, along with other Russian and Belarusian players, missed Wimbledon last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine.
in basketball, the NBA and the National Basketball Players Association have reached a mutual agreement for a tentative labor contract. The seven-year collective bargaining agreement is yet to be ratified by both sides. The deal includes the addition of an in-season tournament, the removal of marijuana as a banned substance, and a second luxury tax tier. However, the age limit to enter the NBA will remain at 19 years old. Mexican solo climber Perla Lopez is aiming to be the first woman to scale and live alone on Mexico's highest peak. She aims to spend 32 days atop Pico de Orziba mountain in Mexico. The mountain is at a height of over 5,600 meters from sea level. To ensure her survival, she has the support of a medical team. A little more time on the glacier. Ethiopian sprinter Abeje Ayana finished first in the 2023 Paris Marathon's men's segment. Ayana beat favorite Gui Adola with the time of 2 hours, 7 minutes and 15 seconds. It was 20-year-old Ayana's debut in the Paris Marathon. Veteran racer Hele Kirkpop finished first in the women's category. In cricket, the Indian Premier League or IPL has begun. Virat Kohli and Faf Du Plessis paved the way for Royal Challengers Bangalore to win their opening match against Mumbai Indians. RCB beat MI by 8 wickets with 22 balls to spare. Faf Du Plessis scored a momentous 73 from 43 balls, winning the Player of the Match award. Kohli's unbeaten 82 from 49 balls was loaded by spectators at the RCB home ground. Spinner Yuzvendra Chahal's four-wicket wall helped Rajasthan to an easy 72-run win against Hyderabad. The Rajasthan Royals set a target of 204 runs for the Sunrisers Hyderabad team. The Hyderabad side was restricted to 131 for 8 in their 20 overs. Rajasthan's spinning line has Yuzvendra Chahal, Ravi Chandran Ashwin and Adam Samba. Italian rider Marco Bezzici claimed his first MotoGP win in the Argentina Grand Prix on Sunday. Marco's win is also the first victory for the Ducati team. Ducati F1 team is now owned by seven-time world champion Valentino Rossi. 24-year-old Marco gained a nine-point lead in the overall standings. Marvel Studios has released the trailer for its show Secret Invasion. Actor Samuel L. Jackson will reprise his role as Nick Fury. In the series, Nick Fury fights off an invasion by shape-shifting aliens. The show will premiere on Disney Plus on the 21st of June. Warner Brothers Studios is celebrating its 100th anniversary. The studio has opened its top secret archive for the media. Archives include props, vehicles, costumes and documents. Some of the items include actor James Dean's costume from the film Rebel Without a Cause and Batmobiles. The Academy Awards have established a production and technology branch. The unit will give representation to 400 members. Those working in key technical and production positions are part of the unit. Departments like stunt coordination and line production are also included. Chernobyl director Johan Renk is set to direct the film The Prisoner in His Palace. The film is adapted from a book of the same name. The story outlines a portrait of late Iraqi President Saddam Hussein. It also shows 12 US soldiers who guarded Hussein in the months leading up to his execution. Netflix has locked the cast of its limited series The Perfect Couple. Actor Nicole Kidman will star alongside actors Dakota Fanning and Eve Hewson. Indian actor Ishan Khattar is also stars in the series. Production is underway for the six-part show. Rapper Cardi B has joined the voice cast of the film Baby Shark's Big Movie. The rapper will voice Sharky B. The animated film also features the rapper's family. 
Her partner, musician Offset, vo gives voice to Off Shark. Her kids, Culture and Wave, will play Culture Sharky and Wavy Shark, respectively. Actor Taraji P. Henson has joined the cast of the show Abbott Elementary. Her first appearance on the show will be in season two. The episode with Hensel will air on the 12th of April. She joins actors Kinta Brunson and Tyler James William in the show. Adult film actor Stormy Daniels has pushed her interview with broadcaster Piers Morgan. Morgan made the announcement in a tweet. He wrote that some security issues have arisen. The interview was meant as an exclusive after former U.S. President Donald Trump's indictment. Details for the rescheduled interview are yet to be announced. Dozens of attendees at the band Morbid Angels' show in Illinois were injured. Over 260 fans of the band were in attendance at the show. The accident happened as the roof of the Apollo Theater collapsed after a storm. 28 people were injured while one is reportedly dead. Oscar-winning music composer Ryuchi Sakamoto has died at the age of 71. Sakamoto was diagnosed with throat cancer in 2014. He composed music for films like The Revenant and Little Buddha. Sakamoto won the Oscar for Best Original Score for the film The Last Emperor in 1988.